Welcome to Monday. Welcome to the morning ball. Feel free to tie up. It's pretty strong. We've had it down there for a long time. Some of you are wondering, James, how do you moor in such deep waters? What is your secret behind this morning ball? And the secret is tribe. That's how it works. Turns out all our keels collectively create this stability zone and uh, gives us this respite from the storm. Am I muted? Fuck no, I'm not. Good to see you. Um, what's up, everybody? What's up, everybody? Uh, I don't have a problem with understand. I think the word under is a beautiful word. I think when we're... I'm not saying you're, you're doing this, by the way, Free Press, but I just want to put that out there. I, I, I got no problem with people changing it to understand. I, I think it's cool. But at the same time, there's really no reason to, like, you know, crap on understand. Roots are under. Everything that you see above the ground is occulted below, under, under the soil. And if you adopt an idea that under means bad, under means weak, you're missing out on some power. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. The tectonic sh plates have shifted. And I just want to say that to the city of Los Angeles, sucks for you, man. It sucks for you. Um, 
one of the finest witnesses around and one of the finest voices, honestly, uh, has, I, under the impression, has moved out of L.A. and is no longer uh, servicing that city with her witness. And I, I just feel that the Appalachia itself is just like erupting in this beautiful coup, this purring coup. Uh, of joy for knowing that uh, the the great Catherine Hopkins has joined uh, the city of Virginia. And if I'm wrong about that, correct us all in the chat, Catherine. But I know if you're at least here in person right now, and so even that is uh, doing a lot for our uh, our soil here. So there you go. Before I forget, we have a uh, episode three of Paco Crypto. I think that's our official name. Uh, I think Foom was in here, and uh, uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, I'll see you, Los Angeles. Yeah, that's that's so great, Catherine. That is, man, that is so great. I uh, I got to be honest. A couple of times I've been like, and if you're living in one of these cities, and you're like my go-to like person, you and Diego, I'm like, I don't want to tell them where to go or what to live. But man, it's really great to know that you're. That you're looking around. So there you go. Some of you might still be in LA and you might feel kind of weird that I just said this. And hey, it's the vitriol, right? City of angels. Angels ain't got no genitals. You know that, right? Angels are covered with eyes, right? Eyes and wings. That's all you got. Eyes and wings, right? And that's going to give you a uh, totally different bend. So yes, Apaco Crypto, number three tomorrow with the uh, host full full meta alchemist or fuma uh um look forward to showing you that in fact we got uh talking uh doubt uh no we're talking pmas tomorrow i don't even know what a pma is so there you go and sark sark too has left the state of uh colorado colorado and he's moved to kentucky shit i probably shouldn't have fucking said that uh good luck finding though there's like a lot of a lot of caves around there but uh, Daniel Boone is, you know, the city here is called Boone that I'm close to. And uh, the birthplace. Uh, our very first, did you realize that our very first tribal fire was at the birthplace? It was either Boone or Crockett. Hang on a second. Daniel Boone, birthplace. I don't want to be wrong in... Daniel Boone was born in, born in Ole Valley. That's in Pennsylvania, so it was actually Davy Crockett. So there you go. So I have the first time I was punched in the face, it was in the Daniel Boone National Forest by a guy named Rambo. How's that? He was a ginger, too. This ginger Boy Scout named Rambo just fucking popped me right in the nose. I was smarting off to him. He was, uh, he was older. I totally deserved it. And it fucking woke me up. Like, I, I couldn't believe that I just got hit. I was just like, someone has hit me in the face. What what kind of what kind of insane craziness has this been? And his name was Rambo, so it really it really like uh had a good uh it had a good sting to it, you know? It had a good sting to it. Uh that man's dead now. I killed him. Uh I found him in a waffle house. And I encouraged him to leave the Waffle House and come to the IHOP. Why? Because I don't like IHOP. And if I killed him in the Waffle House, it would ruin every time I go in the Waffle House. Sure, I might feel a little dilated because, hey, this is where I killed Rambo. But I, I don't want that. The, the Waffle House menu is fine, just the way it is. So I went to the IHOP. Then I killed him with a very dull butter knife. Took a while. Because he, he was kept tickling. He was just like, why are you sticking me with that? Yeah, it was, it was, that was my fantasy. Uh, crypto's currently getting hammered. Uh, man, they're getting forged. T2 Brighter. That's not hammered. They're getting forged. Cryptos are being forged right now. In the crevice of, holy shit, that sucks. Right? In the forge of, holy shit, that sucks. That's, that's what's happening to them. Wow, there's all kinds of stories coming in about Daniel Boone. Uh, my father shot a burglar. Look, here's Ann weighing in. My father shot a burglar with an expanding arrow when he went to the hospital and turned out his name was Daniel Boone. 
Now, I don't know if that means your father's name was Daniel Boone, or if the dude he shot, a burglar, was named Daniel Boone, or the hospital's name was Daniel Boone. But all three of those would be interesting, Ann. So thank you for being here. All right, so I solicited murder, right? Didn't I do that? Covered that, right? Pretty much said it's okay to murder. Uh, yeah, well, bring that... Bring You should come Tuesday. We should talk about this. The Fed is opining... Cryptos for yeah. That's why we're gonna. That's why we're doing this Tuesday. That's why we're doing this. Yeah, you should come. Uh, Full Meta put a link to the uh, to the show. It's on uh, the Dojo War channel. Actually, you put a link there. You could check it out. And uh, yeah. But speaking of murder and mayhem and piracy, privateers, all that stuff. I wanted to just point out something that is just kind of an interesting little parable, parable in the world. And it turns out that when what we think are called countries, they're, they're, they're called countries, but what we think countries are, when they declared war on piracy, is the exact same decade, exact same decade, declaring war on witches, declaring war on pox. Smallpox, declaring war on demons, declaring war on piracy, all in the same decade. And yes, piracy's been around, and of course, uh, other countries would invent other pirates. But the very first capital punishment for piracy brought about in, in, in this country uh, took place... Under the exact same auspices as witch trials. Not only the exact same auspices, but the uh, same people involved. And to get there, I want to tell you about the Offenses at Sea Act. And before we talk about the Offenses of Sea Act of 1536, I first want you to... Um, so the other day, I started to read a parchment where I... Uh, pronounced all the F's as if they were an F. And uh, that, that was uh, that's supposed to be funny. And uh, I'm going to do that sometimes. People come in and telegram and say, James really shouldn't do comedy. And it just makes me push it harder. So I think the problem is you. It's not my comedy. It's that you have a broken sense of what's funny. I, I'm, I'm actually just kidding now. But I do want you to kind of trip out on what this act used to be called. This act used to be called... An act of punishment. This is not a spelling mistake. This is how it used to be written. An act of punishment of pyrotes and robbers of the sea. And what I really want you to see is the word sea. That before we begin today, I just I just want you guys to know that that the word sea was actually written as sea. S-E-E. S-E-E. And if you consider the idea of an Akashic record, if you consider the notion that all of the information uh, in the world, uh, information by experiential memories, per se, is stored in the salt and or what people call the Akashic Record, I'm putting forward that I think the Akashic Record would be the ocean itself, because the ocean and the air, by the way, the air is the ocean too, just so you know. It's just a... Guys, there are thermal layers to the ocean. It's very, very different. If you study sound propagation through the waters, you will notice there's like a sweet spot of different ocean underneath the ocean, and you could put a signal in there, and it goes bing, 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 bing. And that at the surface of the ocean, that is not the end of the ocean. It's not. We learn the same thing about your epidermis, don't we? That above your epidermis, the piloelectricity creates a static layer. And that that static layer, you can feel. You can feel the changes in the electrical field to that, which means that your skin is doesn't end your epidermis. No, it doesn't. A soft skin extends beauond the epidermis. It's what we would call your auric field. And that it's a field that's reading information. This is why you get uh, tingling sensations when someone's staring at you. This is why you get goosebumps. This is why your hairs stand perfectly erect. That outer layer of skin 
that we don't claim as our own, we think, well, that's not me, it's not my epidermis, uh, is, is you. And the ocean has the same thing, and it is the uh, layer right above the ocean that we call the air, the foam. All the birds, the oceanic birds, are showing you the proof of that. They're showing you, look, this is we're part of this thing. I'm just a fish. I'm a fish, says the seagull. I'm a really dry fish. Dry, salty fish, right? What was I talking about? These, oh yeah, the sea. An act of punishment of pyrodes, which sounds like pierogies. An act of punishment for pierogies and robbers of the sea. Oh yeah, the, so the Akashic Record, think about it. Think about it. If everything that you could know was in the Akashic Record, in the salt, well, what is the ocean? It is the place where you see. It is the place where you see the entire source Everything, from Sheol up to the top of the dome. Everything, all pieces, all parts of it, conglomerated into one record that you can see. It's, uh, anyway, an interesting thought. This uh, Offenses at Sea Act, um, what's really important about this act, the Offenses of Sea of 1536, is that it defined that piracy was an act of treason, but here's the stipulation. This is what made this interesting. But only if you were raiding a ship without a valid commission. The first act of piracy did not say, piracy's wrong, okay? The first act of piracy said, you may not be a pirate if you are not working for a country. That's what it said. This act wasn't declaring an outlaw on piracy. This act was declaring an outlaw on sovereignty. This was the offense. The offense at sea was actually not piracy. The offense of sea was not being under the commission of someone else. If the nationality of a prize was not the enemy of the commissioning sovereign, the privateer could not claim the ship as a prize. Doing so would be an act of piracy. Do you remember the stream last week about the Truth Commission? Do you see why I called it that? From the Federal Clan Bake, uh, thank you, Mo. I, that's an old stream I, we did, 79 or something. From the Federal Clan Bake to... The Warren Commission, to the 9-11 Commission, to the COVID Commission. There's so many more, by the way. Please don't hold me to just these. There's so many more. Watergate, Whitegate, Blackgate, Yellowgate, Colorgate, all, Smulligate. All of these things, the way that these are stamped and moved is a commission is assigned. And the commission comes in and says, this is, this is reality. This is what reality is. And that that commission is tasked, tasked with explaining why reality is that way. The Warren Commission explains, well, the reason why this is clearly the case is because uh, Lee Harvey Oswald was inside a book suppository. And he made these shots, and before we could uh, ask him more questions, he was killed by Jack Rigby. That's the commission that we've commissioned what do you do when you have a painting made? You have it commissioned, right? Would like to commission a painting of me naked on top of a large crocodile wearing a saddle and a big top hat. I'd like to commission that, please. The commissioning of that, right? So what does that do? An artist comes in who receives the commission and what do they do? They paint the canvas. So what did the Warren Commission do? Warren, Chief Justice, right? We need you to come in and paint the story of Lee Harvey Oswald, Jack Ruby, JFK. What did Warren say? Uh, this is a criminal investigation. This is not something I should be doing. I don't even have the ability to investigate this crime. I don't even live in Dallas. 
I've, I'm a judge. I'm a Supreme Court judge. Nowhere in the land do you find a judge and say, hey, we need you to hunt down little Billy's killer. It doesn't happen. Why is it happening now? Why? Because a commission was given, an artist was hired to fulfill his commission. The commission was to paint a canvas that had such beauty and such glory that the person commissioning it said, mm, it's exactly how I pictured it. You painted this with such visual stimulation that I am so proud of how you painted this picture for me. It's exactly how I pictured it. So you understand what commission means. You understand what C means. You understand that pirates and pierogies are not related. That was me just making a joke about the spelling. Although they could be. If someone wants to explain the potato pirate, that's fine. I would imagine potatoes probably did pretty well. Actually, I know they did. Did you guys know? Sorry, sidebar. I need like a button. Sidebar. Did you guys know that potato and potato... Literally two different vegetables that in Mayan culture, the the potato, it was a little bit different. It's patayo, patayo or something. It's like the patayo was a derivative of the sweet potato. Keep in mind that a sweet potato is not actually a potato. That's just what we call it. Okay. It's a uh, yamways. These are yamways. It's like Amway and Yahweh mixed in the sweet potato. The Whoever genetically modified that really knew what they were doing. It was a long time ago. That dude's long dead. But the potato is the white thing from Ireland that, or that we, we associate with Ireland. And the potato is actually this uh, really small sweet potato that does really well on, on ships. Did you guys know that? I, maybe you already knew that. I just learned that like last last couple weeks I thought that was interesting I guess we'll find out if uh who cares James you, you just have to go with it man if they don't enjoy the potato potato that's fine it's okay and the pierogies all of it man all of it the uh okay how do I set this up the first case of judicial murder in America involved piracy. It involved the trial of Quelch, John Quelch, Captain John Quelch. The arraignment, trial, and condemnation of Captain John Quelch and other of his company for sundry piracies, robberies, murder, committed upon the sub subvex subjects of the King of Portugal. Her Majesty's, Majesty's ally on the coast of Brazil. On the coast of Brazil. Upon full evidence, were found guilty at the courthouse. Half. <laughs> I'll stop. But in Bolton, it's still funny. On the 13th of June, 1704, by virtue of a commission, there's the commission. By virtue of a commission, Grounded upon the act of the 11th and 12th year of King William for the more effectual super supersion of piracy. There it is. With the arguments of the Queen's Council and Council of Prisoners upon the Fed Act. Upon the said Act. Now, by His Excellency Joseph Dudley, as Captain General, Commander-in-Chief, and over Her Majesty Providence of Massachusetts Bay in England. After His Excellency Joseph Joseph Dudley. Joseph Dudley. I think this is the guy. Uh, now, Joseph Dudley. Nope, not there. Okay. Joseph Dudley was working on this trial with a very famous man, some of you may know, called Cotton Mather. Who is Cotton Mather? If you've been watching this show, you already know who Cotton Mather is. But I admit, it's very likely that you might have forgotten. So, John Keach, John, John, this dude, sorry, I'm going to set this up a little bit different. John Quelch, this dude, given a commission to be a pirate, 
He was like, hey, John, you want to be a pilot? He was like, fuck yeah. I was like, all right. Here's your letter marquee. Actually, it was John's boss who was given a letter marquee. To, to really trace the story back, John's boss, captain of a ship, was given a letter marquee. Those dudes left the ship, I mean, left Boston Harbor on their way down to Charleston. And before they got there, uh, they threw that captain overboard, and John Quelch was named the new captain. And that's not why Quelch was put on trial. Nope. No, you're actually allowed to do that. There's no one has any beefs with that. No beefs at all. There's not even a law against that. That's just how it goes. Right? So, Quelch is put in charge. What does Quelch do? Quelch is not fulfilling his obligation that the letter of Marquis gives him, which is that, dude, you're supposed to be producing loot by pirating. Because the letter of Marquis was a commission to create piracy, as we know, but it was not like a lightweight sort of, hey, it'd be great if you could kind of go out and be a pirate. No, it was like, your ass is mine for giving you our boat. If you do not uh, bring back something, we're going to throw you off the boat too. The exact same thing that you did to your captain, we will do to you. And so there was an, a pressure, and John Welch felt, Quelch felt that pressure. So what did he do? He started attacking uh, Portuguese ships. And his Commission doesn't allow him to attack Portuguese ships. He did it anyway. He was a pirate, after all. Right? So, he wasn't actually arrested or tried for piracy. He was arrested and tried for attacking the wrong people. That was his crime. Now, he was hung in Massachusetts along with his crew. And that, that hanging was the very first prosecution of a pirate. And what I think is fascinating about this case is that the uh, judge in charge of that case also was in charge of the Salem Witch Trial. In fact, one of the biggest issues that they were having with Mr. Quelch was not convicting him, but it was on giving this trial legitimacy because it was actually oversawn by a psychopathic mass murderer that decided I'm going to listen to a 13-year-old girl because it just sounds better. Look at her. She's got like a daisy in her hand. Why would we not listen to her? Yes, yeah, so what? She's sending her own mother to the... It doesn't matter. No big whoop. Come on, guys. 13-year-old. Why would she lie? You ever heard of a 13-year-old not telling the truth? This one's, this one's legit. Not only was that dude on charge of this, but Cotton Mather was too. And Cotton Mather is a fascinating dude. Fascinating, because it was Cotton Mather who vaccinated America for the very first time. Now, did he personally vaccinate America? No, he only personally vaccinated about 400 kids. Most of them. No parental consent at all. He's literally wandering through the village with a needle, sticking it with people. What was he sticking him with? He was growing pus on the back of a cow's ass. And taking that pus and putting it in the syringe, taking the boy, sticking him with it, putting him inside a stable for two weeks, not feeding him, to make sure that he lived. And if the boy lived, he let him out. At least four children were killed by Cotton Mather, murdered in cold blood with a syringe full of cow pus. Not a joke, not an exaggeration. I would imagine it's more than four. When I say at least four, I mean I can guarantee you it was four. Now, if he did it to 400 of them, and 1%, and only 1% are actually reported, which is what we have today, it gives you an idea of how many didn't go down in history. So the, the two dudes that were homicidal psychopaths were the very first people that hung Quelch 
under the auspices of piracy. But was it piracy? No. It wasn't piracy. It wasn't piracy. It was the fact that he went after a Portuguese ship. And a year earlier, had Quelch gone after a Portuguese ship, it wouldn't have been a problem. Would have been fine. It was only after a certain amount of time that we decided, hey, Portugal's no longer on our side. Now, here's the fascinating thing. When you start to look at pirate flags and where they came from, you would have to start with the first pirate, right? The first pirate that was put to death for being a pirate is probably a pretty good, accurate marker of what kind of flags were steering these ships, right? Was, did, did Quelch have the skull and crossbones? Did Quelch have the hammer and sickle? Did he have the saber, cross saber? Did he have the buccaneer hat? Did he have the heart and the hourglass? What was the very first pirate flag that kicked off this whole thing? And it was, it was this flag. It was this flag. Well, that's a red cross, James. That, that's not a pirate flag. It's a red cross. Yeah, that's the uh, admiralty flag of, uh, oh, what's that, what's that island of pirates you know, they fly this flag and they go around telling, killing everybody, saying they're pirates. Oh, you know, England. <laughs> the, the very first pirate ever convicted and killed was actually under commission from England. And he flew the British flag, Admiralty flag. That was the first pirate flag. It wasn't the Jolly Roger. It was the Red Cross. It was the Red Cross. And as you start to go through the different pirate flags over the ages, you notice that the Red Cross disappears very quickly. It's like right away. First thing they do is, let's take the cross off those flags. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. So, so who are these flags? Right? Who are these flags and who do they belong to? What you're looking at is a flag of sovereignty. These certainly aren't all the flags, but all of these are basically different derivatives of different Jolly Rogers that have been flowed by different pirates over the, over the time. Sometimes they had dual flags. There was a red flag and a black flag. It, it, uh, of course, they certainly evolved and changed over the years. But the very first Jolly Roger flag was actually the Red Cross. That was the first one. And I think when you look at the fact that the Skull and Crossbones, the Skull and Bones Society out of Yale, you, you really do see kind of a, a deeper truth into, into how these things work. That it's the public aperture, it's the public aperture that takes the biggest pirate in the room and says, well, these guys are good. And all these other guys, they're bad. And as long as you eliminate all the competition, then you're the good guy. It would be very, very similar to all of us declaring that Walmart is the good guy and that all the other corporations that are below them are bad guys and that Walmart is secretly trying to declare war and destroy all these other corporations to help us. That's what a country is. That's what a country is. A country is a conglomerated piracy that is flown under a flag long enough that the Jolly Roger of that country has enough legitimacy to where they can issue their own marquees, their own Jolly Roger letter of marquee flag of war, which basically says if anyone does not submit to a flag, kill them. And if they submitted to the wrong flag, kill them too. So now there's really only one option, which is allegiance. The only option is the lack of sovereignty. 
It's the only one. Unless you want it bad enough. And if you want it bad enough, you're going to be one of these. And this is a different life. This is a seriously different way of life. Because you get no quarter from any flag. In fact, if anything, your flag is your demise. You claiming your sovereignty is your demise. Now, why do you think there's so many skulls on this flag? Well, that's because that's how they intimidate the other guys that they attack. And say, so it could totally, man. Yeah. But is there something deeper there? Because I see the flag doesn't see the extrovert would be like, well, the flag they're flying is for me, see? They're showing me their flag. They want me to see what that flag means, and it could. But really, any sigil, any loco, that flag really means this is, this is us. This is who we are. We are dead men. We are walking, proud, dead men with a standard. A standard of mortality. We are are the drinkers of our own mortality. We embrace the truth of who we are, that we are dancing with the devil and with death itself. And that we are on the high seas underneath the standard of this union that we have with the skull. That we know we're bleeding. We know we're dying. We know this is what it's about, which is exactly what makes us so dangerous and so powerful. What's back on civilization? What? What is happening right back on civilization right now? Think about it. Because what's happening back on civilization right now is Cotton Mather chasing kids with needles through the forest and nothing happens to them. Nothing. What's happening back on land? Anyone who's dressing too fancily or has too nice of a cuff link or too, I'm sorry, too nice of a cuff on their, on their shirt. Anyone who is, seems to be assimilating with the Native American population too much. What happens? You're accused of witchcraft. Indian slaves. What we equivalently see, uh, Indian slaves who have integrated into society. They've gone into their own indentured servitude. What are they doing? They're, asked, they're being asked for remedies because the mothers of the house, her children are sick. And so the Indian slave is, is uh, going out into the woods and creating a fetish potion poultice, bringing it back to the child, applying it to the child's head. The child uh, is either healed or it dies. It doesn't matter because afterwards, the neighbor, fucking Karen, next door, gets wind of it and calls Cotton Mather right here and says that house is practicing witchcraft. And they're not vaccinated. You go get them, Cotton. And out of the birth of that entire world came piracy. And that's where you get the fashion of piracy. That's not a wardrobe choice. That's not just to tell you the story. The flamboyance that you see pirates wear was absolutely the blossoming of their sovereignty because on land you weren't allowed to dress that way. You weren't allowed to think that way. You weren't allowed to be that way. Land was a crutch. It's always been a crutch. From the moment we're born, land has been our crutch. We are children of God. God does not need a government to survive. God does not even need land to live. You are learning to incubate. And you come to the land because you don't have to worry about drowning. You can go to sleep at night. And more importantly, you find tribe. And in that tribe, you find the deepest kind of vitriol. Piracy was the last living image of Libertalia. And it wasn't even an imaginary land. 
The fables tell you that Libertaria is an imaginary pirate land that pirates had that they would go to. And no, Libertalia was a posture that they carried at sea. They see the truth of this world. Their aperture could absorb what's really happening. And when they look under the flag of a country, all they see is another pirate. That's all. Why? Because their aperture gives them enough comfort to actually absorb the truth of what this is. This is a psychological war implemented by us, on us, from the moment we got here. Amuraka was a pirate, a joint pirate letter of marquee do you understand? A joint pirate letter of marquee was signed against the Powhatan. Who were the Powhatan? The people that lived in Virginia. It wasn't a new land. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't. It's was quite a big city, quite a large uh, nation. A nation so large that we have to call them Powhatan because they had too many different names and we couldn't keep track of them all. There were too many people here. So we called them people of the river that is was just discovered by Spain. These are the people that lived on the river that we just discovered for Spain. They're they're the pre-Spanish. You know, they're the the anti-Spanish, the Spanish that get there before you get there. It's a psychological war. And I remind you that the the very first syringe was called a witch pricker, right? You guys remember this, right? This is what Cotton Mather was so famous for. Oh, come on. Here, I'll show you. Here it is. Witch pricker. The very first syringe... Was this? No, no, not that. The very first syringe was this. This was the first syringe. There's no medicine in there. You're supposed to shove this into the thigh of a lady that has too many cats. And if she squeals and you don't like it, you get to say, see, I told you she was a witch. And that's all it would take. This isn't an oddity, by the way. It's just how they did it. So what did Colton do? He goes, I have an idea. I will distribute pus on the end of this from a cow. And I will shove this into the witch. And her pox will be gone. A pox on you. That should be a clue. That they weren't practicing medicine. Nor were they, practicing, nor were they not practicing government. They were practicing, practicing piracy and paranoia, psychopathy, and infanticide. And that's who we call our government. Cotton Mather is someone who's famous in his town. He's not shunned. He's famous there for that. For his uh, amazing contributions to society. This dude's the pirate. And it took a lot to convince people in the town that we're going to have a non-jury murder of John Quelch. And the people said, why? It's like, because he was a pirote. And who was saying that? When John Quelch was taken to the gallows, Cotton Mather gave a speech about how holy and religious the town was as they did it. And he probably used the same lines he did from the Salem Witch Trial, exact same ones, explaining to you why it was necessary to unleash this piracy on the populace. 
that the letter of Marquis makes it okay. The letter of Marquis says it's okay. So you really do understand that all government is is just another one of these. And they incorporate it. And it's not even odd to say that. Port Royal, right? One of the most famous pirate cities in the world was a living representation of a co-op, a pirate co-op. It was a bioregional, sovereign, bio-pirate uh, co-op. Not kidding. Not kidding. Pirates were landing there, and by choice, by, with pride, with pride, were unloading a certain percentage of their treasure and putting it in the Port Royal coffers. One in every four houses was probably a brothel or a bar. It was the complete antithesis of everything that Jamestown was trying to do, that Salem was trying to do. It was a city for giants, psychologically speaking. And we can say, well, they're evil as fuck, and they are, and they do horrible things. Of course they do horrible things. Are you kidding? They do horrible things to their enemies, they declare anyone that's not them their enemy. It's a communistic system that's disguised as a unanimous, I mean, it's not unanimous, but disguised as a democracy. And it literally eats anything that's in its path. What is a government but the same? How is a government different than this? We've, we've invaded a new foreign country every 1.3 years since World War II. Some of them in the same country, but we did it again. But it's the same thing. No difference. The letter of Marquis is fancier. Sir William learned to put another spiral in his name when he signed it. That's really the only thing that's different here. It's really the only thing. Of course, Port Royal was uh, thriving until a uh, earthquake took it out. All the water around the sand gave it this temporary uh, water cushion, like on a waterbed. And then it just, after the earthquake subsided, it just <laughs> collapsed, just sank. The town kept going, but then like four hurricanes hit. It was like, it was like just a blitzkrieg of just like, stop, stop being sovereign. Stop having sex so much. Stop drinking so much. And uh, most of the world wrote it down as, see, God punishes pirates, says Cotton. God punishes them. And what does that do? It makes you feel like a good guy. You feel like a good guy now because you're like, oh, well, that dude's evil. One of the, got three bear trolls this week. And uh, I think apparently the crow episode was mentioned on, on, uh, on the bear show. And so there was a, uh, a brigade coming in and it was, the first one said, you're satanic, James, you're satanic. That's what you are, James. You're satanic. And if you weren't satanic, this world would be a better place. And we've all decided that you're the key to our problems, says the bear. And that's what Cotton Mather is. Literally chasing children through the woods with cow pus shoved on the end of a witch pricking needle. Telling everybody how satanic they are. <laughs> it's literally still happening today. We haven't grown out of that yet. We're getting there. But we haven't grown out of that yet. Of course not all bears. Absolutely right, bipolar bear. Of course not all. And that's the hermetic order. The hermetic steps. You take steps out of that. Out of... I remember the first time I was moved by satanic. The idea that someone might think I was satanic if I was to say something. Or to do something. Being like... My God, and what is that? That's me abandoning myself. That's me putting myself outside and saying, well, what are they going to think my pirate flag means instead of me just standing for what it means for me? 
right? So you start to adjust your posture because you want to make sure that everyone thinks that you're the least satanic person around them right now. And that's how cooties works. This is literally the exact same game of cooties. And you try and explain this is aperture. You try and explain this. And what do the bears do? Aperture means sphincter now. Apparently, the gears inside a camera remind Owen of a sphincter now. That that's his first go-to, is to think about that. And that is the exact same kind of mentality that we all go through. The first time I doubted Pizzagate, I felt that way. The first time I implied that Pizzagate was used as a uh, prop by Breitbart to build a press name for themselves. You know what the first pushback was? You're working for them, James. You're satanic. You're evil. Why? Because I was taking away their demon. Pizzagate was a beautiful demon, and I just took its legs out. That's a problem. It's a problem because we have a economy now built on hunting witches, built on hunting pirates, built on hunting invisible germs. And it's all the same thing. Like, it's all the exact same thing. It's this process that we go through. And we need the enemies just as much as we need our heroes to decide who we are. All of these were enemies and heroes at the same time. All of them were hermetic steps into something bigger. Anyone following Cotton Mather tended to feel, oh, look how sanctimonious we are. My God, we're so sanctimonious. We're so non-satanic. With our powdered wig, look how non-satanic we are. Look, man, we don't, we don't believe in witchcraft. No, no, we're just going to chase your kids down and shove this needle full of cow puss in them. It's not, it's not, it's not satanic. It's science, man. It's science. It's logos, dude. It's totally following the logos. We got to fucking stick the logos in that shit. Put the logos in that child's ass. It'll feel better. Sphincter. We're, we move through these things. You guys will move through me. You guys will be like, man, I'm tired of James's shit. Fucking A, dude. Tired of him. And I don't know who the next step is up for me. I don't know. There's many. It's all Polly, right? I don't mean Polly is in amazing Polly. This is your step too. I can't take it personally when you decide, wake up one day and decide either I'm satanic or I'm just lame. Those are the two options you get to go for, right? I'm either interesting and intriguing or satanic or lame. <laughs> Which would I rather be with you? You know, definitely makes you think, well, shit. I think I might prefer if you think I'm satanic versus thinking I'm lame. Just being honest. Why? Because I've already, I've already processed that. Because anytime someone's chasing me with a cow pus needle claiming that I'm satanic, and if they stick me with it like cooties, I'm now instantly satanic. I've already been through that. I've already had that whole thing of, well, what is satanic exactly? In fact, I went through it so hard that I wrote, I wrote an article called The Anatomy of Satanism. In Hollywood. And I started to just dissect. What is satanic? What does satanic really mean? And I found out something. That part of what satanic really means is. Is you get to join Cotton Mather. That what satanic really does. Is gives you the ability to point at something else. And say look how clean we are. See that satanic thing over there? We are not over there. Therefore, ergo, we are not satanic. And this is the exact same technology, the uh, transmutation technology that we talked about. Why is every saint topping the next saint? Right? Well, I was, was crucified upside down. Well, I had my skin flailed, and then I was crucified. Well, I had my head cut off, 
and then I was crucified. Well, I was crucified four times. Yeah, and they, they kept bringing me back to life. It wasn't a resurrection. I'm not trying to say I was resurrected, but they kept bringing me back to life, so they crucified me again. Well, I was crucified in seven different cities. They took me on a crucifixion tour. Every single one of those saints is trying to top the suffering, and look at Jesus. My goodness, the Alma Christi, the weapons of, of crucifixion, right? The actual weapons of Christ. It was like 23 of them or something. 23 different weapons used to torture and tirade someone. This is the exact same psychosis of the satanic nature of being afraid of 666. And what is 666? Damn, guys. Are you fucking serious? We're still running away from a number right now? And you know what? People that are looking for electricity automatically find power in that number because of what a scared little bitch you are around it. That when you decide, oh, that number's satanic and I have to get my post office box changed because it has 666 on it. Or, oh, fuck, my license plate has a 666 on it. i got to go back in the DMV and tell them I can't be driving around with a 666. People are going to think I'm satanic. That's a real thing. People fucking do that. And you know what happens? One kid on a BMX bike who's just tired of being bullied. And he goes in and he's like, what number do you want on your plate? And he's like, well, 44's taken because James True's got it. But I want 666. And the guy's like, you know what? Fine, fuck it. I got another. I got extra sixes. Sure. What did that kid do? He picked up the alchemized power that some bitch ass lame dude dropped by saying everything's satanic, but me. Why? Because he needed that excuse to feel better about himself. He needed that push against someone else to psychologically make him feel better. This dude killed four kids at least. And he still wanted around. What did he do next? He went to John Keach's funeral and said, Before you kill this man, we really need to just really be in touch with how evil this fucker is, right? I mean, come on. This dude's fucking evil. It's like killing kids. How did he kill them? He, like, stabbed them with, like, you know, a piece of metal. Well, didn't you do that? No. No, because I'm not satanic, see? And I hang out with other people with our powdered wigs, and we talk about how satanic other people are. We don't talk about how satanic we are. And man, I'm telling you, if I saw this, I'd be fucking a pirate too. That's who you are. What do you think tribal one means, guys? What do you think tribal one really means? It's this idea that we're tired of the satanic bullshit. Can we please stop fucking playing this game? And the answer on land is no. No, because that guy's satanic. We gotta get him. We gotta stick him with his cow bus. We gotta get the cow bus in him. If we get the cow bus in him, everything's gonna be okay and I'll go to heaven. That mentality is with Tico. That is with Tico. That's what the Palatan said. What, you're discovering the land we live on? Yeah, we totally discovered it. Look, there's more. There's a tree. Oh my God, no one's ever seen this tree. And he's like, but my kid's hanging from that tree on a hammock. Yeah, well, we totally discovered it. Hey, have you been vaccinated? You guys, you guys are satanic. And what do we do? What do we do? Fucking declared war on him. The whole time. Yeah, they declared war on us too, totally. It was... It was bunch of dudes declaring war on each other it's like who would have ever thought if a bunch of people entered into a giant mega dojo earth dome with full amnesia and just unleashed their quest for survival around each other that maybe people might end up killing each other why is that satanic exactly is a lion satanic is anything that that captures its prey satanic yeah, okay, great, great. I think you'll find that there's a church of veganism that will ultimately be the cotton mather that you seek. And I'm not saying it's wrong. You know why? Because I feel like a hypocritical bitch. When I eat meat, of course I do. It's part of the vitriol of it all. Right? But am I chasing around someone else with cow pus to shove it inside them, saying, you're satanic? And me and my bros have decided you're the problem because sphincter. It's the exact same mentality is all I'm saying. 
All of us are pirates. This is not a doctored photo. It's a Polish submarine with Nazi memorabilia <laughs> flying a pirate flag. Not kidding. <laughs> Didn't make this up. Your coat of arms, your family's coat of arms is a pirate flag. Did you know that? Your coat of arms, your sigil, some of you draw sigils with your name. That's your pirate flag. And it will only be people like Cotton Mather that say, Oh, that's satanic. That flag is evil. Look how evil that flag is. Why is it evil? Because it's got death on it. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. D death is evil? Yes, death is the most evil thing that ever existed in the world, duh. It's so evil. And it's not. Death isn't evil. No, your, your fear of death is evil. Your fear of pox is evil. Your fear of James and his satanic ideas. That's evil. Anything that gets you out of your pirate flag and sitting next to Cotton Mather isn't really anything morally to be proud of, is it? And it'll take a while. It'll take a while to change your posture, to stop shedding enough energy to where you can literally live on your own land, where you can literally be your own sovereign island. This is hard to do. I look at billionaires with yachts now in a very different way. I'm not talking about the fancy yachts. Every now and then you'll catch a, a billionaire that's bought like an ice tender, right? Ice tender is typically multiple holes. Not only that, you're not making it out of quarter inch or half inch steel, right? You need something thicker. And they've rigged out these uh, ice tenders as a billionaire would. Made them like freaking styly, right? Made them like awesome. And when I look at people like that, I think that's probably the closest really energetically, physically, synchronistically, spiritually that people have come to being fully sovereign. And I'm talking about the billionaires. And on land, the culture is you can't be that fancy. You can't be wearing rings. You can't be wearing florist shirts. You can't be wearing hats. It was against the law to wear a hat that was too high. It was too flamboyant, too salacious. Why? Because it indicated that you were higher than the society was. Right? It, it indicated that you were satanic. Piracy was born out of people like Cotton, the Karens of the world, calling those people satanic. And they're like, you know what? Fuck these people. We'll go do our own thing. We'll go to Libertaria. And people started asking, well, where is Libertaria? And the only answer that was really true, the only true answer, was this was Libertaria. That the only way to truly embrace Libertaria was to hoist your own flag and say, fuck you guys. You don't think I'm going to die? You, you don't think I'm afraid to die? Bitch, you're afraid to live. That's what these flags mean. These flags mean you are afraid to live. You there on the fucking island declaring war on piracy, saying everything's satanic. You are the one who's afraid to fucking live. Me? I sleep with death every night. And I can't think of a more based fucking way to live. Like, I don't think you can be more base than that. And it's not going to be with, under a powder wig with Cotton Mather talking about, I think he's talking about sphincters, really. Guys, James is talking about sphincters, so we need to, like, really, really chase him with pus-filled cow pus and a witch pecker. That's all we'll do. You're surrounded by landlubbers. 
You are a pirate in training. You are. You are a pirate emerging. And you're scared because every time you run up that flag, what happens? People come after you. They come after you. That's why you're learning to build your field. That's why you're looking for electricity along the way, which is probably why you're into my show. Because you find that even though I don't have the salacious victimhood, even though I don't have the, we found the deepest, evilest, satanic figure by far. It's right here. Look at him. Oh, look at him. Eat those children. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. We should send our kids back to school tomorrow. Instead of getting that kind of spice, you're learning, you're watching these lessons that burn into your posture a little bit. And you start to think about, what does my flag look like? Do I have, fuck, I can have a flag? It's like probably the first thing. Wait, wait, I get a flag? Holy shit. God, I need to fucking plan this out. What's on my flag? Like even that, that's posture. And some will get lost because they think, well, I have to have the perfect flag or the perfect scissors. No, you don't. Just the fact that you want, know, and understand and don't think it's satanic that you have a flag, there's the posture. That's it. Now you can dismiss me as either, you know, boring or satanic. It, it, it's You've gotten one of the things that you came here hermetically to get from me. I might have more for you. I might not, right? Just depends. Depends on the day. Depends on where you are. This is uh, you finding you, finding your tribal one. And this piracy stuff is just carving it so clearly. What happened to this world? How we got here? Why we got here? And why it's still there. I'm going to say it again. The very first pirate hung by a judicial court in America was oversawn by the dude who led the Salem Witch Trials and Cotton Mather. It's as if those pirates were taken to another pirate land. But that pirate land when you brought your pirate ship in, no one volunteered to bring their gold or silver in. Why? Because the pirate of that land held a gun to your head and said, give it to us. Required 45% of your life force to be in his village. Meanwhile, in Port Royal, what is everybody doing? Yes, they're getting syphilis, of course, but they're getting it on. They're having a good time. And they're living in a voluntary state. Yes, there's syphilis. There's a lot of syphilis in Port Royal. I will not change that. I will not try and mask that. Right? I think that there's a lesson there too. I think that those pirates were like, wow, we really need some vitriol. And syphilis is like, come on over. I got you covered. And it tells you something about the pirates. Because what were the pirates doing? Did they stop going to Port Royal? No. No. What they do instead? Injecting wax and lime juice up their peepees, right up the hole, injecting it, and then going back to Port Royal. And here's what's even weirder. You could find a chick in Port Royal, and she'd see that your wee-wee is full of wax and lime. She was okay with it. She was like, you know what? Maybe it'll feel good. Who knows? That's how badly... Sovereignty was important to them. And nowhere in life has survival ever come with dignity. What I mean is, is that the quest for survival has always been this trade-off of dignity, of peace, of sanctity. That's part of the reason why you were crucified on a cross of morality and mortality. Because if you weren't stretched on the mortal cross, you would have no context to have a moral life, right? The mortal cross gives you a moral life, right? Morals left, right. Mortal, alive, dead. You get it? That's the cross. Alive, dead, left, right. Morally, right? The moral axis and the mortality axis. Now, we are surrounded with people that are afraid to die, 
What do people that are afraid to die do? They kill other people so they'll be safe. They kill, try, and convict other people for being satanic. And they chase them down with needles, with cow pus in them. Why? Because the mortality cross is too strong for them, so they're not able to live on the axis of morality. They are purely on the axis of mortality. See how this works? Best Apocalypse Ever, my latest book. I really recommend you reading it. There's one chapter in there that just basically just lays this out. It's very short. doesn't take long at all. You get it? It's the fear of death. That's what your satanic means. Those are people that are afraid to die. And why would you not be afraid to die? That's how jacked in this place is, right? But as you find more electricity, as you adjust your posture, you start to live like a Powhatan. You start to live like a Mashika. Do you know who these pirates really were? These were Mashikans. These were people that embraced the Mashikan way of life. Where fear, fear, is an electricity to be harvested. And that fear, fear, is something that reminds you of what's on your flag. Right? It's hard to be afraid of death when it's your standard. <laughs> right? You know what standard means, right? Isn't that interesting? The word standard came from the word flag. Those men carried their standard proudly, right? It's hard to be afraid of, it's hard to be afraid of death when death is your standard. Do you understand how liberating this is? Oh, but it's satanic. Oh, it's so satanic. Oh, I need a powdered wig to help me from how satanic this is. Someone help me. We need powdered wigs. Quick, stat. We need powder wigs for everyone's stat. Thanks, Graham, for the uh, super chat. Appreciate you guys. Um, <clears throat> this is the rising of consciousness, and it goes through the gateway of piracy. It's still there. It's still there. You don't think billionaires are pirates? The study of flags is called vexology. That is freaking fascinating. Wow, thank you, Annie Violent. Wow, that's awesome. The study of flags is called vexology. I had no idea. Prune my lips, but that's what Annie says, and she's pretty trustful. I, I would imagine that you could invest invest some, uh, some prana in her standard. She's got a good standard, she does. I <laughs> see. Okay, Spectral, you're pushing a little bit high. Pushing a little bit hard there with the hell Satan. Just pushing a little bit. But hey, that's what makes a pirate, right? See, the pirates are always pushing the boundaries because the boundaries are the antithesis of death. Right? That death itself is no boundaries. Death itself is no boundaries. Being underneath this is just a completely different way of living. Um, guys, check out uh, High Magic on Saturday. It's a good show. Uh, that's on the Dojoor channel. Like I said, we have a new show on uh, crypto, uh, pocket crypto. Uh, we sort of quasi normally have a show on Monday called uh, Mooncast. And I don't think there's going to be one tonight. Uh, there could be one, but. It might be tricky because tonight I'm actually spending, uh, we're streaming with Rose Triple Seven tonight. I'm going to talk about, believe it or not, I'm going to talk about the uh, the FBI bust. 33, <laughs> 33 dudes all wearing the same mask, the same ski mask in summer. We're in the back of a U-Haul with no windows, with the door closed, with their masks on. And a cop pulled them over, and a cop pulled all 33 of them out with their masks on and handcuffed them all. And there's video of that. And that they were actually going to disrupt a and riot at a pride rally is what they were supposed to do. 
And we're going to talk about that tonight because I want you to know that this photo proves to you that that was impossible. A, it would be impossible that 33 dudes would all have the same ski mask, A, and B, because they could certainly all have the same ski mask. One dude could have gone to Walmart and bought them all for them. But B, all of them agreed to put them on while they were stuck in the back of a U-Haul in the summer with the door closed and no windows. And that C, a policeman who pulled over the U-Haul and opened the back of the door, saw them all with masks on and did not do a policeman's job, which is when you take someone into custody, you I physically and positively identify them, which would be, you need to remove your mask. Instead, you have 33 dudes, all in the same gray mask, most of them with the same boots, all of them cuffed. And it shows you this truth that keeps you out of the Cotton Mather world of pretending that, well, anyone in the news who's calling the bad guys bad guys, that makes them the bad guys and the news is the good guys, right? That's the satanic cooties trick, and it's still happening today. So uh, check that out. That is it. I think it's late. I think it's a 10. I think it's a 10 tonight uh, on Rose's channel. So you have to check that out, Rose777. Um, and yeah, Tuesday tomorrow, 4 o'clock, we do our uh, Apocalypse Crypto show. So you can check that out. Um, leave it here. I've got more about pirates, but I, I'd love to see any feedback you guys have about what we've been talking about. I only covered one pirate today, which is Keech. Uh, not Keech. Uh, I was, what is his name? Quelch. Sorry. Keech is the other one. This is actually Keech. This is Quelch. And so that was just the first one. Now it took a while because we really needed to, I really wanted you guys to tap into the, uh, uh, Cotton Mather stuff. And how Scarlet's Wharf in Boston really became a satanic hanging ground for people that just made us, made it hard for us to live in civilization. Wow, look at that, Super Chat Kyle. Thank you. Hello, recently found you. First time caught you live now. Amazing stuff. Much appreciated. Already bought a couple of books and going to dig in right on. All the best. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, there's uh, Rose's Triple Sevens channel. You can check that out too. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Yes. You cannot come back for next time. I'm giving you homework. <laughs> All of you need to construct a pirate flag. So follow Twillist Miss uh, Inspiration there. And uh, yeah, get that flag done. And uh, we'll, we'll show them all. And uh, we'll have a, a, a war. And we'll give each other syphilis. It'll be fun. It'll be a great time. All right, get out there. Get on that cross. You can do it. Let him call you satanic, man. That's how you fly. Love you guys. Thanks. Turn the lights out.